Over the last two years, I've purchased and reviewed dozens of different speculative crypto miners on this channel. In this video, I'm going to share exactly how I made $2,206 with all those miners in July of 2024. This is a monthly series where I track all my income from crypto mining and running crypto nodes, minus my current expenses such as electric and hosting costs, so I can share with you my net income for the month. Stay tuned because I have a refreshed ROI or return on investment analysis for every miner, which I'll share with you later in this video. For those of you that are new to this channel, first off, welcome. My name is Jason and this is Swan Castle Crypto. Most of the miners we'll be reviewing today are DPEN miners, which stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Network. It involves using blockchain technology and token incentives to build and maintain physical infrastructure and solve real world problems. Most of these devices are low cost and low power, making it easier for home miners like you and I to get involved. Plus, I think DPIN will be one of the hottest sectors of this upcoming bull market, so it's not an area I think you should ignore. This month marks 27 consecutive months of sharing this month in earnings review with you on this channel. I put this together for you so we can keep track of the profitability of every single miner I review for you. It takes me a long time to put this together, so if you learn anything from this video, I really would appreciate it if you hit that like button for me. Now, you may have noticed I'm releasing this video a day earlier than normal this month. And that's because my wife and I are expecting our baby girl uh, likely in the next day or two. So I want to get this video out uh, before she arrives. Now, we'll start off here. We're going to look at these miners from most to least profitable. We'll go over each and I'll give some high level commentary. Uh, let's get started here. Uh, starting off the top, number one project for the month are my flux nodes. I currently have three flux nodes, uh, two Nimbus and one Stratus. I did have some staked on Titan nodes. Those are smaller nodes. Uh, and I ended up uh, selling those earlier this month. Uh, the yield on these flux nodes is really not very good anymore. Uh, so I'm making a decision to reduce my exposure to flux at this point. But for the time being, I will continue to run uh, my two Nimbus and one Stratus node. But if we don't see some continued uh, good performance out of the flux token, I may end up uh, closing down my flux nodes at some point and moving on to uh, some more lucrative projects. Coming to number two for the month are my, is my WeatherXM weather station. Uh, this product just went live, I believe two months ago. Uh, so my rewards here, I netted $124 for the month, and that does include my beta rewards. So my rewards are a little bit higher than you would receive if you just uh, started to uh, spin up a uh, WeatherXM weather station on your own, uh, but still quite lucrative here for me, especially these first couple months. I've uh, been constantly selling my tokens, and at this point, I've uh, already made back my cost of my weather station in just uh, about three months so far since it went live. Coming number three is my Hyfix GeoNet Space Weather Station. This is an antenna uh, you put on your roof, uh, netting $114 for the month. A couple things to note with uh, GeoNet, they did just have their annual halving at the beginning of July, so rewards are uh, reduced, uh, cut in half moving forward. We go to my geode calc, you can see the impact of the halving here in July, where my rewards are essentially about half of what I was previously receiving in June. So the max rewards per day, it was 48 um, prior to this having, and now it is 24 tokens, uh, geo tokens per day. Now, I receive uh, a little bit less than that 24. I think that has to do with uh, some trees around my house limiting uh, the view of the horizon for the antenna, but still pretty decent rewards for GeoNet. I'm really excited long-term for this project. I think uh, it's one of the best use cases I've seen in terms of uh, deep in projects in terms of trying to help uh, the accuracy of GPS around the globe. All right, number four for the month is my Galaxis engine. Uh, we can see quite the poor uh, price performance for the Galaxis token this month. They just went live, I think two or three months ago, but down 54% this month. It was a very volatile month for the crypto market. Obviously we aware of a lot of different major news stories uh, impacting crypto this last month. And obviously uh, Galaxis uh, was on the downside this month. Uh, we saw a lot of tokens that we hold. Some are up big, some are up down big. And this is one of them that are down big. Now I have half my Galaxis engine uh, tokens that I've earned so far staked, so I'm earning additional yield on those. But for the month, we're netting $102, so not bad for those uh, three Galaxis engines. Cover number five is my Hive Mapper dash cam. Now, I Previously had two Hive Mapper dash cams, but I made the decision this month uh, to get rid, of, get rid of one of them, my side facing dash cam, and I gave that to my brother. Uh, he's waiting on his bees that he ordered, so I gave him one of my dash cams while he waits. Uh, they did uh, implement a new MIP 
uh, this month, MIPS 17, and that specifically impacts uh, side-mounted dash cams. Essentially, if you're moving over 40 miles per hour, or I think it's 65 kilometers per hour, uh, you basically don't get any uh, mapping data from your side mounting dash cam. They found that essentially the uh, the quality of the mapping data when you're moving that fast is basically not good at all uh, from a side facing point of view. So it makes sense that they would uh, eliminate rewards for uh, side mounted dash cams when you're moving fast. I think it only makes sense for side mounted when you're moving slow, especially in urban areas where there may be some demand uh, for that uh, street view data. So I made the decision, uh, we're just gonna go with one dash cam front facing for the time being until I uh, get my B in and we'll review that hopefully in the next couple months. If we go to my honey calc tab, you can see my rewards. My rewards were down uh, once again this month. Now well, one week of rewards uh, excluded uh, that second dash cam. So I had three weeks of double dash cam set up and one week of a single. And you can see my rewards are still pretty horrible here. Uh, High Mapper implemented a bunch of big changes in, I believe it was March, April time period that really reduced uh, rewards for a lot of people in certain areas of the globe. And obviously it looks like I was severely impacted there. Um, I did do a video several months ago in terms of what was driving that large decrease. Uh, so you can check out that video if you want to learn more about High Mapper. I think High Mapper is still a great long-term project, but it does kind of stink that these rewards have really fallen apart over these last couple months. I know that a lot of you have been waiting on your dash cams. It could be frustrating to see rewards fall apart. Uh, while you wait for your dash cams. Coming to number six is my Demo data miner. I have two of these, uh, they're both level four. Uh, Demo token was up 12% this month, so not too bad, uh, earning $69 for the month. If we go to my Demo calc tab, uh, here are my rewards by week. If we look at the change week over week, we averaged a ch net change of negative 1.8% uh, in rewards week over week for the month. Uh, so not too bad. Uh, several months ago, we were seeing pretty big reductions as the network grows. Essentially how the rewards pool for demo works is you take a total reward pool divided by the total number of cars that are equipped with uh, demo or demo software via smart cars. And that's your share of the reward pool. So as more and more people join the network, you're going to see a, a smaller and smaller distribution of tokens each week but still quite lucrative for Demo. Uh, we've been in this one since the very beginning. We're part of Testnet, and we've made uh, tens of thousands of dollars with our Demo, so no complaints uh, over here. One other thing I want to mention with Demo this month, uh, Deepin Connections channel uh, did a nice interview with one of the founders of Demo. So if you want to learn more about Demo and some of the things they're working on long-term, I highly recommend you check out uh, that interview. I found it really uh, informative and entertaining. I'll link it in the description below if you want to check that out. All right, number seven are my Steppen NFT shoes. Uh, nothing really going on here. Uh, this GST token is holding up pretty nicely and still netting about $70 for the month. Uh, number eight, my phone farm. I did add three additional phones this month. Uh, I took advantage of the Amazon uh, Prime Day deals and ended up picking up three additional phones, I think for 30 bucks, maybe 40 bucks each. Uh, so we're back to 50 phones on my phone farm, uh, netting $58 for the month. Number nine, we have Get Grass. Uh, this one's still on Testnet. Uh, the points price I have here is from Wales Market. Uh, it's a pre-market uh, where you can bet on the price of uh, various tokens and points that have, have not yet gone live yet. Uh, they did make an announcement a couple weeks ago uh, that they are doing their last uh, beta epoch uh, right now. So uh, that, based on my understanding, they should be going live with their token here the next month or two. Uh, so we'll be able to look out for uh, the grass token going live. They'll be going live on Solana. You can already connect your Solana wallet uh, within grass so that you can be ready for when that goes live and get your uh, grass tokens uh, when they distribute them. Number 10, uh, pre-search nodes. Uh, this one's been quite a disappointing project for me over the last couple of years. You can see the, the pre-search uh, token is basically back down to 0 0.011. Uh, so just over a set, down 22% for the month. It's basically still at bear market lows. Uh, I made a decision several months ago to cut about two thirds of my pre-search tokens just because of the horrible performance of that token. So only netting $32 for the month. And that includes a monthly airdrop that they're doing every month for uh, 2024, I think to try to incentivize people uh, to hold on to uh, their pre-search notes at this point. So I'll, we'll wait and see. I'll continue to help support the network, um, but I definitely won't be throwing any more money into pre-search notes at this point. 
Cooper number 11 has also been a disappointing project lately, and those are my fry miners, uh, making $31 for the month. I have six different fry miners. You can see them listed here. Here's my daily earnings. The good thing this month is we didn't see any reduction rewards. Uh, last month we saw uh, some reductions. They institute a rule change as more devices come onto their network. Uh, they institute a reduction in rewards uh, moving forward. So I think things have slowed down a little bit for fry these past several months since the token has not uh, performed very well. So I think there's less interest in the project at this point. But we'll wait and see on our fry miners. Hopefully we can see uh, the fry token come back. Number 12, my streamer node. Uh, I have this uh, staked on the streamer ne network, uh, making just under 26 bucks for the month. Number 13, we have Crank. I have four devices uh, running on Crank, generating $23 a month. Another poor performance for the Crank token, unfortunately, this month, down 21%. We've been in this project for, I think, just over a year now, and it's basically been down uh, ever since I got into it, which is disappointing. But we'll continue uh, to run our Crank devices, and hopefully things will turn around for them. Uh, one thing uh, they did announce this like last month is they did enable multi-mining on Crank, so you can mine up to 11 different other D-pin projects on your Crank device. Device, uh, just clicking one button. So if you're interested in me putting a, a tutorial or a video uh, going over multi-mining with Crank, I can definitely put something together for you guys. I do want to look into that further because it looks like it might be fun to uh, explore some other projects uh, running on our Crank devices. Uh, so let me know if you want me to put that video together. I can try to find some time and uh, put something together for you guys. Number 14, we have my Helium Bobcat 500. Uh, this is a 5G Helium uh, device. Uh, mine's their mobile token. This one's been a big disappointment lately. This thing was making so much money uh, a couple months ago, but as the network has grown out and they've instituted some rule changes, it's really fallen off. But uh, we've more than made our money back with that, uh, being especially being early to this project. Back when I was on testnet, we were getting hundreds of thousands of tokens each month, which at the time was worth nothing. But when once this token went live, it, uh, it made this very lucrative, but uh, unfortunately not lucrative anymore. All right, number 15 is Matt Metrics. It's another drive to earn project. I'm making just $11 a month. They didn't announce a few months ago they're transitioning uh, from Solana to Peak. So I believe they're right in that transition now uh, because I'm seeing only my rewards in my uh, Matt Metrics app and it's no longer uh, going into my Phantom app. Uh, so we'll wait and see uh, as they move towards that transition to Peak and how that goes over the next several months. Number 16, my Ipolo G1 Minis. These are solo mining grin, uh, making 11 bucks for the month. Uh, 17, my Deeper Connect Mini. Uh, another poor month in terms of price performance for the Deeper token, just making six bucks for me for the month. Uh, number 18, my ETCMC nodes. This one's been uh, disappointing as well over these last uh, several months as we've seen the ETC POW token basically just plummet in price. Uh, this was print money uh, the first couple months we were in it when we got into this uh, project early on this channel. So hopefully you got in with me uh, when uh, we got in. So you got in early and hopefully made all your money back. Uh, but at this point, we're going to retire this to the graveyard just because the profitability is you know, under a dollar per month uh, for each of uh, these nodes. I'll continue to run them, but unless we see significant uh, appreciation in the ETCPOW price, uh, we won't be covering it monthly on uh, this analysis anymore. Number 19, my Helium Bobcat IoT miners. I once again have two of these down. They're the crank ones that are down, generating me just uh, less than a buck a month for my Helium miners. Uh, number 20, PiFi, nothing really going on here. They went live a couple months ago, uh, but we really haven't seen much action in terms of their PiFi token yet. So just generating just under a dollar for the month. Number 21, we have my Solana Chapter 2 phone. I had one airdrop this month, uh, this chili airdrop, just worth 50 cents. Number 22, Examiner. Uh, we saw a huge appreciation in the uh, SE Prime token this month, up 142% uh, near uh, the end of the month in late July. I looked, I did some research. I couldn't really find a, a driver for what was driving that, uh, but it's good to see uh, the token price increase there. Fortunately, we still are on testnet for this project, and my uh, device was down a couple of months ago, so I really have almost no space utilized on my device, so I'm not really earning anything each month, which kind of stinks. Uh, but I do have a whole bunch of SE Prime uh, tokens that have accumulated via mining and running my X miner over the last couple of years. So it was nice to see uh, a nice increase in uh, the SE Prime uh, token this month. I have yet to sell any tokens yet, but uh, we may uh, look to sell some if we continue to see some appreciation in price over the next several months. Number 22, my Solana Saga phone. 
go to the Solana Saga tab. So the current value of all the different airdrops and tokens I've got from my phone so far is $1,788.57. I'll throw up a screen recording of my current wallet value on the screen now. This is compared to the purchase price. I uh, paid $2,200 for this device. I obviously paid out for this off of eBay in early January. So we're getting close to the break even of the purchase cost at this point. My intention is not to sell any of these tokens. I've not sold anything yet, and we'll continue to hold this probably for at least a year uh, as we get through this bull market and see uh, how much this thing's gonna make. Uh, I think that's a good idea. We'll hold it for at least a year, and uh, we'll see what the value of these uh, all these different airdrops are come uh, January of next year. Number 24, we have Onakoi. This one is still on Testnut, so I'm earning their Bono token. This is a Solana-based uh, project, very similar to GeoNet in terms of uh, geospatial, trying to enhance uh, GPS. Uh, so I'm excited for this long-term as they approach uh, their mainnet here, hopefully in the next couple months. Number 25, Wingbits. This is flight tracking, also still on Testnet. Uh, 26, Sorchain Mini. This is another drive to earn project, uh, very similar to Demo. Uh, they did announce last month uh, they're doing their token launch in September. So it'll be exciting as we approach uh, the main net for uh, Sorchain. Number 27 is a new project this month, uh, the Star Plug. I did a video on this last month. It's essentially a smart plug uh, that you get rewarded for using. They track your electricity use. It, there's whole, not a whole lot of information on their white paper yet in terms of how this project's gonna be monetized or work. Um, but I bought this a couple months ago because I like to speculate on uh, various crypto deep in projects. So we'll wait and see uh, if Starplug could be lucrative for us as well. I believe they're planning on launching their token in Q4, so we won't have to wait too long to see uh, how profitable this one's gonna be. Number 28, I have my future bit Apollo Bitcoin miner. I run a full Bitcoin node on this. I'm gonna, I am gonna. made the decision uh, to throw this in our graveyard as well. I don't see this being profitable anytime soon unless we see uh, multiple $100,000 Bitcoin. Obviously, we're nowhere near that. So we're gonna throw this in the graveyard. I'll probably still run this in the background just to support the Bitcoin network and run a full Bitcoin node. And I can use it for uh, privacy purposes for myself, but we won't track it on this spreadsheet uh, going forward. And then 29, our last one, are my Bitcoin miners. Uh, generating a negative $201 for the month. Uh, I have these hosted through BitCap Hosting. I have six S19 Pro 110 Terahash Bitcoin miners. If we go over to my Bitcoin mining chart, here's my earnings per day from the pool side. Uh, so we're earning about $5 per uh, miner per day times six miners. We're earning about 30 bucks a day for miner. You can see the profitability for each of them in terms of on the revenue side is relatively consistent at this point, but unfortunately we still are underwater. I did another calculation of what price we would need for Bitcoin to be at uh, for these things to uh, become profitable again. And then based on my calculation, we're looking at just under $80,000 Bitcoin price uh, for these miners to be profitable for me. Uh, now this also doesn't account for future mining difficulty and any transaction uh, fee changes. So this, that number could obviously be uh, way different, um, but we'll have to wait and see. At this point, I know it makes more sense to shut off your miners and DCA into Bitcoin, but at this point, I'll just keep running these. If they continue to stay unprofitable or become more profitable, I may end up shutting them down temporarily. But at this point, I'll just uh, take the hit of $200 a month and I'm highly confident that we're gonna see much, much higher Bitcoin prices in the coming months and years. So it'll more than uh, pay for it because uh, I'm not selling in my Bitcoin anyways. Next, let's move on to our miner graveyard. Like I mentioned, there's two new additions this month. I just wanna highlight this each month because I want you to keep in mind that not every project's gonna be successful. Uh, and obviously we've been involved in a lot of projects that haven't worked out. You can see basically every ASIC I've ever owned is on there. And that's because all these gold shell mini box miners are no longer profitable. And it was a huge mistake of mine uh, to get heavily invested in those uh, basically near the end of uh, the last bull market. But, uh, Sometimes we make mistakes and you gotta live with your decisions. So just uh, keep in mind that not every project's going to be successful and don't put all your money into one project and uh, hoping it's gonna be a big winner because that's not always the case. Next, let's take a quick look at the ROI or return on investment analysis I put together for each of these miners. For those of you aren't familiar, an ROI or sometimes known as a break-even analysis compares the current uh, cost of our miner or node versus its profitability to determine how many days it would take to break even. We'll start off with the assumptions I'm making here so we can level set. Uh, first, the 
Minor fair market value estimates are based on recent minor comparable minor sales I'm seeing from eBay. When those cases I can't find the minor on eBay, I'll look at the current uh, manufactured cost for each device. These are not my purchase costs. Uh, in almost all cases, I paid way more for my miners. That's just how mining goes. It goes down in price over time. Uh, next, this is my current month net income. My, my actual expenses, yours may be different. This is as of a point in time, July 30th, 2024. Minor value and income amounts are obviously gonna vary over time as token prices uh, change over time. And then finally, this is not financial advice. Don't use this as your sole justification uh, to buy a bunch of miners or notes. Now I have uh, these ranked by sh shortest to longest break even. And then I have a rank here and a color coding system in terms of my thoughts on each of these projects. Green, I think are the top tier projects. Uh, yellow, I have some concerns. And then red are the projects that uh, I think you should stay away from. Now we're gonna do this a little different this month. I'm not gonna give commentary over all these because I don't have a lot of time this month. Um, so I'm just gonna give uh, some high level commentary on a couple of these that I think are the best bets. And I'll let you to decide whether you wanna buy one or not. It doesn't really matter to me. So our number one project for this month in terms of ROI is Get Grass. And that's because there's no cost uh, associated with this project because it is still on testnet. Uh, but I do have this marked as yellow because there is some potential security concerns by running a program on your computer on your network but the good thing at this point is it's making 73 bucks a month which uh, you can't complain about for a uh, no-cost project but you do just need to weigh uh, the security risk with uh, running a project like this uh, an application on uh, your computer network number two we have weather xm i have this one marked as green uh, this one's been quite profitable for me now this does include my testnet rewards so if you were to pick up a weather xm weather station at this point uh your earnings would be uh, a little bit less than you know i'm seeing for myself number three we have the high fixed geonet station uh, that's also a green project for me here i believe it's uh, six to eight weeks for delivery on their website now, they just have the halving so uh, the profitability of this has been cut in half moving forward but you're look still looking at just under six months uh to make your money back with uh high fixed unit space weather station. I think this is one of the strongest projects out there and it's still very small. I think they only have like 7,000 weather stations across the globe at this point. Uh, number four, step in. I would stay away from step in. It's just not sustainable. Number five, demo. Uh, if you're not involved with demo and you've been watching this channel for years, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, this has also been a huge winner for us and uh, I'm really excited with some of the things that demo has been doing. Hive Mapper, Hive Mapper is another solid one for us uh, since we've been in this one since the early days. Obviously, it's been disappointing these last couple of months as they've re reduced earnings for us, um, but it is what it is. The token is down pretty considerably, uh, but uh, I'll continue to support uh, Hive Mapper because I think it's something really cool and uh, awesome that they're building in terms of trying to map all the, the roads in the world. Then we have all these other projects uh, where the ROIs are just pretty horrible. Um, so I would be very skeptical about joining a lot of these other low uh, return projects at this point. It, it's just, I, I'm very doubtful that you're gonna make your money back in terms of uh, uh, some of these nodes and uh, projects that uh, just really have not performed very well so far. If we go down here to the bottom for our testnet projects. What, this is where I think you could potentially speculate, especially some of these lower cost ones. XM Miner, I would stay away from XM Miner, it's just too expensive. Yeah, the token performed well this month, but I don't know that anyone jumping in and spending that kind of money, I don't think that's a great use of capital at this point. On a koi, I think uh, this is very similar to GeoNet. I think this one would be a good one to speculate on, especially as they move towards mainnet here in the next couple of months. Uh, Wingbit sounds fun. I don't know how they're gonna monetize that, but it is low cost and if you enjoy uh, setting up antennas and tracking uh, planes. It's a fun little project to, to get involved with. Uh, Sword Chain Mini, I think this one, this one's basically a, a new demo. Uh, so I think this one could be a big winner as well as they go live here in the next couple months. Star Plug, I've marked as yellow. It's a fun speculative one, but I don't see really the long-term use case or way that they're gonna monetize this project, but we will wait and see on Star Plug. Obviously, uh, is low cost, so that's why I jumped into this a couple months ago and pre-ordered one. I was willing to throw a hundred bucks at it, but uh, if you don't have that much to throw away, probably stay away from Starplug. And Bitcoin mining, I would stay away from Bitcoin mining. Uh, there's just too many big players in the Bitcoin mining space, and uh, there's no room for uh, the home Bitcoin miners anymore, unfortunately. So I've got discount codes for a lot of these miners that I'll put in the description below. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hopefully I have a baby here in the next uh, day or two. Uh, and I hope you guys have a good month.